Buenos días. Good afternoon. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Zaragoza. I am Josefina Maestu. I am the director of the United Nations Decade Program for Advocacy and Communication, the organizers of this conference. And I'm going to act as your master of ceremonies for this conference. Uh, it is my pleasure to, to give the floor to Xavier de Pedro. Mr. Xavier de Pedro is the president of the River Basin Authority here in Aragon, in Zaragoza. And he's going to chair the opening session. The floor is yours. Thank you. Eh, buenos días. Eh, thank, thank you. Good morning. We are going to start this international conference promoted by the uh, UN Water Decade Office here in, in, Zaragoza, in Spain, uh, with the seat in uh, Zaragoza. This conference is an honor for the Ebro River Basin Authority, which is the organization that is managing this basin, the Ebro River Basin. And it is an honor that this conference is celebrated here at this house. And I hope that this conference is going to be a success, uh, especially taking into account the issue that the UN has declared for this year. This is water and energy, which is a very important issue uh, related to water management. And in this sense, I want to um, enhance or to emphasize the importance of this issue uh, for the Ebro River Basin Authority, as 32% of nuclear energy produced in Spain is generated in the Ebro Basin. Thanks to the water of this basin, 25% of the uh, hydraulic water uh, is produced in this basin, and uh, also we produce 11% of thermal conventional energy. That is, water is very important for us. This presentation or opening um, session is just to give you a very warm welcome. Uh, here we have uh, with us today the representation of uh, most of uh, the government of Spain, the uh, president of the Commission of Agriculture, Food and Environment uh, of the Spanish Congress, that is Jose Ignacio Llorens, and uh, Mrs. Liana Ardiles, who is the general director of water uh, belonging to the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Environment of the government of Spain. And we also have here the uh, councillor of the municipality of Zaragoza, uh, where we are holding this conference, uh, whose name is Jeronimo Blasco. He has been always collaborating with uh, the Ebro River, um, the Ebro River Basin Authority, and we are going to give the floor, the floor to them so that we will hear their vision from the institutions and the importance that they give to this conference and the international dimension of this debate. We have to apologize uh, the representative of the government of uh, Aragon, uh, which is the autonomous community where, where we are holding this conference. Zaragoza is the capital of this uh, autonomous uh, community. Well, uh, as I was saying, he was unable to uh, come. He couldn't make it to come, and he asked me to convey his apologies to you. Uh, but he's supporting totally these sessions here in Aragon. So we are going to give the floor to the president of the uh, Commission of Agriculture, Food, and Environment of the Spanish Congress, Jose Ignacio Llorente. Good morning. It is important for me and a reason of special satisfaction to be here in these sessions, uh, two years and a half, uh, two days and a half time for these sessions on water. And I speak on behalf of uh, Lerida, which is a province where I am also a deputy. And um, I want to 
convey to you the wish that these uh, days are going to uh, be held with all the interest uh, due to water because the issue of water itself is a very important issue and we uh, have to also assume the uh, challenge, uh, future challenge in order to, uh, well, this is a challenge uh, marked by the FAO and the forecasts in, for 2013 is that we will have to install riego, como todos ustedes saben. many hectares um, for the future. Now we have three million and a half hectares uh, used in uh, rain irrigation or rainfall irrigation. And I want to emphasize the efforts of the government of Spain, uh, emphasizing this uh, sustainability in the use of water because the irrigation system that has been growing and growing is the localized or point uh, water irrigation type. A million uh, hectares of point irrigation have been implemented in the last eight years. Well, exactly since the year 2000, really, so almost 14 years. And in this moment, point uh, irrigation is the most efficient one. From all points of view, it represents 48% of the uh, irrigation systems existing in Spain. 28% is uh, gravity irrigation, and 15% is sprinkler irrigation. Simply, I want to make two comments. I think that it is very important to underline here that uh, referring ourselves to the reform of the agricultural uh, policy in the uh, in the European Union the demand to receive grants for modernizing irrigation is not going to be 25% it's going to be 10% in the savings of on water consumption and i think this is a very important result or uh, yeah result for, or achievement, really, so that the government of Spain can uh, take advantage of these grants to modernize the Spanish irrigation systems. For 2014 to 2020, the government, the Spanish government, has the forecast of uh, uh, boosting or fostering 87 or to drive 87 actions with an amount of money of, or a budget of 700 million euros for the support of these new technologies, water new technologies. I want to uh, thank uh, Josefina Maestu, her uh, very friendly invitation. I had the opportunity to meet her at the, at the um, Congress and we have been preparing a meeting for, before the Commission so that she will be able to, um, we will be able to express uh, this important function that she is uh, carrying out and I want to fully support her in all her actions. Thank you very much. We are going now to give the floor to Mr. Jerónimo Blasco, who is the um, councillor of the municipality of Zaragoza. Thank you very much, Mr. President. For Zaragoza, it is uh, very, as an honor to have an office, a bureau of the United Nations. This is something that we have been supporting, and we uh, think that this is very important for the city and um, I would li also like to tell you, for all of you that don't know this city, that we have tried to specialize ourselves in issues of water or water issues. We have uh, three rivers and a canal, and we have uh, carried out a very important uh, reform or uh, transformation of the city 
Uh, thanks to the Expo 2008. We have also created a cluster of enterprises of companies where the University of Zaragoza is included, as well as several NGOs, important ones, uh, and of course the companies. We want that this uh, specialization in water and the environment has a repercussion in something which is vital in our land, which is the creation of uh, employment of jobs. We have tried to do our homework and commit ourselves with the environment more and more. And in the year 2000, we have a bet for the year 2016, a green bet. And we have some very consistent values, not only on terms of issues, of water issues, but also CO2 emissions. Uh, since the year 2010, we are fulfilling with all the parameters in air quality which is not easy in big uh, cities like us, ours. Also in particles, we, uh, particle emissions, we are complying with the regulations. And the electricity, uh, the electricity is now generated by 653 megawatts. We are producing electricity up to 70 percent. Uh, uh, we are producing electricity thanks to renewable uh, energies. Also urban waste, uh, we have uh, achieved 12 percent in this peri period of time and 35 percent of our municipal uh, area in Zaragoza is protected. Even in a time where economic development normally is negative for flora and fauna, we have to say that from 2002 to 2010 we have uh, pass from 57 uh, protected species to 103 protected species. And you will be able to see that we have multiplied uh, in the last in, uh, seven years, we have multiplied, we have doubled um, the, uh, the amount of surfaces, green surfaces in our city. But we are also fighting now because uh, we have made a big effort on issues of transport with the uh, bike lane, uh, with the tram as well. Like, for example, the navigator, the TomTom -tom navigator that you knew. Now is making a comparison between different cities in Europe, and we have uh, been for over a year uh, one of the cities in Europe with less um, car traffic jams. And we have achieved 99% of uh, water treatment. We are saving a lot of water and we have made very important steps further in this sense. And uh, we are also improving the fact that this city with the green uh, areas and the green rings that it has, it has we are improving a lot with this. We have two uh, programs that are uh, always around these uh, green rings around the city. And we will favor biodiversity through these rings and therefore this city will have a kind of uh, milestone in water and sustainability. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Liana Ardiles, who is the Water Director of the Government of Spain, has the floor. Good afternoon to you all. Thank you very much, Josefina, for inviting me. It is a pleasure to be here, to uh, be able to participate in the opening session of these uh, days. As we see in the title of this program, Water Source of Life, and apart from the binome water and energy, this idea is uh, something that we always bear in mind, this universal access, sustainable access, and equitable access, equitative access, uh, compared to the uh, figures that we all know, the 800 million people that do not have access to drinking water and the more than 
2,500 million people that do not have a proper sanitation. And this is where all countries have to make a very big effort in order to work jointly. Jointly, this is an important word, to, in order to minimize this uh, unequal access to water and distribution of water in the world in order to decrease this threat of uh, food security, safety. And also with the challenge of sustainable development, linking uh, water energy and sustainable development, the impact on uh, the environment where water is an essential part of the whole. This is there where we should focus our efforts. This commitment, as many of you know, is the commitment of Spain, of the government of Spain, in order to achieve that access to water will be universal, sustainable, and equitative. This is the cooperation policy of our country, a cooperation policy that has been very clear and very consistent on the recognition on the part of the United Nations of this pioneering role played by Spain in this action line, water, source of life, universal access, sustainable access, equitable or equitative access. This is the essential key that should uh, inform all our policy, whether national or international. And therefore, we can also speak of many binomes associated to water. This commitment is one of the binomes that is water and safety. This is one of the binomes. Precisely in our bet for a pacific solution of conflicts related to water issues, this is the reason why we have taken the concept of water safety to our strategies, our security strategies. This is one of the key uh, ideas or concepts that Spain wants to convey to the UN. And this is related to this security and this safety. What is our commitment as uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Environment? Well, as the president of the Ebro River Basin Authority was saying, our main task is to coordinate as we could not uh, have the presence of the Secretary General of uh, Cooperation. I wanted to start this. Uh, well, I wanted to start speaking a little bit on behalf of him, but I want to say that we are following this uh, sectoral perspective related to the previous one, that is the cooperation issues, because we are just one defending water. We are one in cooperation. We are one when it comes to defending the uh, Spanish brand or the Spain brand. This is where our sector, the water sector, has to make this commitment effective, the commitment of Spain in order to achieve uh, fairness, universal access and sustainability. And this is where our sector has a lot to say because our sector has always been based on a policy, a planification, a planning, I mean policy. And this is where we um, are different from many others. Our Water planning policy in a country in a situation of stress, not a permanent stress, but a chronic uh, scarcity, which is very frequent in Spain, has uh, made us be present in a line, in a position to be able to speak about water from the point of view of the problems. And we are also here in the policies of consensus. And this is where we have been 
working a lot on this policy, on this policy that has been very fruitful for us because it has given us the management by basins, by catchments. And this is a kind of management that other countries have taken as a model to manage their own resources. And this is our main asset. And the guarantee of being able to face the demand, the supply for 45 million people because now we have, uh, even when the tourists come, we have more than 46 million people in Spain. So that now we are able to attend more than 3.5 million hectares with a guarantee enough to have this food safety I was talking about at the beginning. We have advanced a lot. We have made many steps ahead. And there is one more challenge to be added to the rest of the others' challenges, and it is the challenge of the environment, the challenge of being able to attend this, this demand. And this is what we have been talking about in the last uh, water planning, and this is where we are taking many steps further because um, as opposed to other countries, our planning policy is a policy of compliance our planning policy is approved by royal decree and therefore it is a mandate to be followed. It is not an illustrative policy, it is not a recommendation policy, it is obligatory, it is compulsory, it is medioambiental, mandatory, mandatory. And in this aspect, it is linked to the attention to these demands and therefore of course, our participation in the international world is very high. Passing through our participation in cooperation with water and sanitation through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs with the Fund for Latin America with more than 800 million euros. And this is where we can see the commitment of our country in cooperation issues also in line with the cooperation with Latin America, our presence and our leadership in the uh, conference of uh, Latin American water directors, the technical secretary of which is in Spain, is a very important uh, interchange or exchange of experiences and um, good practices. And this will, this uh, enables us to launch the best practices in water policies from all points of view, uh, that is social, political, economical points of view, etc. In our country, it is also important to be able to launch the Secretary of Mediterranean Sea catchments. These catchments have the same problems of uh, chronic scarcity that Spanish, Spain has. Sorry. And we are also working on the 5 plus 5 strategy, that is the coordination with Algeria, where we are going to add five Mediterranean countries and five uh, African countries. And this is part of the action where our ministry is involved, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, taking into account the uh, foreign actions. I'd like to say that to say that in this line of actions towards uh, the transition to a carbon free or co2 free economy i would like to speak about the challenge that we have with the water and energy binome we have to attend to water demands with uh, more and more increasingly scarce resource and this is a very serious problem of course this entails a problem, which is the increase of energy demand. It has to force us to look for new solutions in order to obtain a balance that should give a response to more energy in order to produce, to treat, and to transport water. 
we are more and more in the line of more efficient treatment. We are also in the line of using non-conventional new water sources. This is demanded by our territory, by our scarcity, and this demands more energy. And we have to look for solutions in order to be able to attend these non-conventional resources that, as you know, in Spain, this has been changed with this. La modernización de los regadíos. Salinization uh, techniques. We have to be more techniques. And this, again, involves more and more energy consumption. And this is a paradox. A uh, great part of the most common energy processes need water as conductor, as a uh, cooler, or in a steam cycle. This is where we have to focus our efforts. As Geronimo was saying before, we are just taking advantage of a part of our energy. 20% of our energy is uh, produced by ourselves, our own. And uh, the hydroelectrical plants represent 8, 15 percent, and we have the combined cycle of plants, the nuclear plants, the thermal energy plants. But we are only focusing on this 20 percent produced by ourselves, or our own 20 percent. Spain consumes between 7 and 10 percent of the total of the energy uh, that is more than 23. A thousand uh, gigawatts per year and this is an increasing trend we have to give an answer a response to this binome and this response has to be uh, part of the future planning in this planning no doubt our infrastructures have to be counted on we have uh, uh, water heritage or a park of hydraulic or water infrastructures that just to give you a figure on dams, we have more than 1,200 big dams to which we should add the small ones, the medium-sized ones, the canals, etc., etc. We have a park of water infrastructures that is huge and it has to be added to innovation. Of course, as we were saying before, here we have an effect that we didn't have in the past. And it has to be at the table, you know. It is climate change. And clean energy, that is CO2 free energy energy that has to do with water and this is a virtue of our element that has to be added to this binome. We also have the European mandates. The European Commission talks about this analysis of this water and energy nexus as a key in order to be able to achieve the strategy 2020. We have to add this effort, the effort of what we have, plus innovation. And we have the line, we have the way, the path of uh, community funds, def defining three goals for 2020. The first one being energy efficiency, the second, adaptation to climate change, and the third one, an economy low on CO2. And this is where our binome has to be adapted. And of course, the uh, food and the water safety, water safety for the benefit of the citizens. I just want to say, to add, that in my opinion, this relationship is not sufficiently acknowledged not on an international level or on a European level. And this can be seen in the limited development of actions 
focusing on minimizing the impacts of water on energy consumption and of course in the limited uh, allocation of funds on a national, multilateral or international level that could help us solve this binome. How can we tackle this problem? We want to tackle it within the framework of water planning. If this strategic sector is strategic in the world, in Spain, water or hydroelectric energy is even more strategic. It, is, it has the fifth place in the group of 27 state, member states. We have 55,000 cubic hectometers of uh, stored and Spain, therefore, is occupying one of the highest capacities in Europe and in the world. And therefore, we have a long way to go in the field of hydroelectric energy. And for this purpose, we should focus in our next planning cycle three questions. The first one being to allow new hydroelectric um, advantages that could be reversible. Some of them are recently ended or finalized. What for in order to have the support for the non-programmable renewable energies such as the wind energy and solar energy? We have to increase our capacity, our production capacity, and we also have to guarantee to ensure the continuity of the resources that are existing. In these three keys, we should be able to insert our goal, water and energy, within the water cycle and in our focus on an international level. I'm going to conclude by saying that the um, challenges coming or derived from scarcity, the challenges we have been learning in our territory and in our uh, water issues, demand from us innovation. The new program of structural funds also speak about innovation, but this is not enough. It has to be they have to be pragmatic, practical solutions. We have to work on the most efficient tools, but we cannot really uh, forget what we have. They have to be added, what we have already, uh, plus the innovative ideas and the innovative solutions. And we have to be able to integrate these ideas within the basis that has to be the basis for decision-making of the polit political powers. That is the basis for uh, an efficient management. This is the single tool that we have to focus on in order to give a good service to the citizens. This is where we are going to focus our efforts in the ministry in what we have called the water and energy binome. And therefore, the, uh, we are ready, Josefina, we are ready to advance for the 2015 agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Leana. And before uh, considering this, op this conference to be opened, uh, we're going to watch a video uh, introducing this conference and it's coming from the UN uh, organization. Distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen, in my capacity as chair of UN Water, it is my pleasure to greet you at this annual international Saragossa conference, a very important meeting which will enable us to continue the preparation for the World Water Day 2014. And I would like to first thank the UN Water Decade Programme on Advocacy and Communications 
for its support in organizing the conference. At the same time, express on behalf of UN Water my sincere appreciation to the government of Spain, to the autonomous community of Aragon, and to the city of Zaragoza for their hosting of the program. This year, World Water Day is dedicated to the theme of water and energy. These issues and their interdependency have received significant attention in the past decade, not only in the light of an expected population growth from 7 billion today to about 9 billion by 2050, but also because both are drivers and inhibitors of economic development and improvement of human health and well-being. However, there are many challenges. Decision and policymakers do not always recognize the interdependencies between water and energy. Further economic growth and increasing standards of living in developing and emerging countries put additional pressure on consumption. Climate change, rapid graded ecosystems add even more complexity to the picture. In 2010, energy production was responsible for 15% of the world's total fresh water withdrawals. Water demand for energy will certainly increase, as energy demand itself is expected to increase by more than one-third by 2035. The growing demand for finite water resources is leading to increased competition between the energy sector and other water-using sectors of the economy, mainly agriculture and industry. If we are to create the future we want, a sustainable future, we need to provide adequate and sustainable access to the more than 1.3 billion people who still lack electricity and to the more than 700 million who lack an improved water supply. This basically means lifting the bottom billion out of poverty. We need to do this while keeping up with the demand for both water and energy. UN Water has dedicated this 2014 World Water Day campaign to the theme of water and energy. And the upcoming World Water Development Report also addresses the same theme. In particular, it highlights the need for compatible and coherent national energy and water policies. 22nd of March, World Water Day, and the whole year of 2014 are therefore important opportunities to put spotlight on these issues and inform decision makers, stakeholders, and practitioners about potential synergies and trade-offs. As you know, cooperation is UN Water raison d'être, and it lies at the heart of its mandate. For the past 10 years, UN Water has built on the collective experience of the UN system, and it has fostered greater cooperation and information sharing among its now 31 UN members and 34 other international partners. We have seen how increased collaboration and coordination can create harmony and help reduce inefficiencies which very much resemble the challenges that pertain to water and energy. Distinguished friends, dear colleagues, I know that there are many decision and policy makers here today from both sectors. I hope that in this conference and by focusing on increasing collaboration and coordination, you will have a chance to identify the interdependencies and significant opportunities that can come from working together. I wish you a very successful conference and fruitful discussions. Thank you. Bueno, con, con la presentación del vídeo damos ya inicio a la jornada de hoy, damos por inauguradas, que disfrutéis estos días en Zaragoza, que sea una jornada de amplio debate y de fructíferas conclusiones. Josefina, por favor, abran las conferencias. Muchas gracias.